Hey guys, welcome back to BMW Blog YouTube channel and welcome to California. I'm actually outside of Laguna Seca Raceway and I'm joined by Sean from Precision Sport or also known PSI, Florida based tuning shop. And I'm here to drive this car today. But before I do that, I'm gonna have Sean tell us more about this one because it's quite special. And it starts with a base BMW M3 six speed manual in a ruby star color from Porsche. So Sean, tell me more about the project, how it started and what you're trying to achieve. Yeah, so back to the 2021, we picked up the car. It was on the launch date, March 13th. We were there. It was actually Isle of Man Green, the original okay. color. Um, it has the Kyle Ami orange interior with the carbon seats and everything. So we really wanted to start off just improving the M3 just okay. from the baseline. So we ended up building it for SEMA of last year. If everyone remembers it, it had the roof box. We had a livery on it. Um, it has the Akrapovich exhaust. It had the full Vorsteiner. We have the lip and the grill from Vorsteiner, the full kit. And we have the roof box, which is a love-hate thing that we did. Um, but now that we're out in California, we can fill it up with everything we need. Okay, so let's talk about some of the exterior upgrades first. We're gonna walk around the car and see all of them. Maybe cool. the front. Tell me why did you decide to kind of replace the grill basically? Yeah, so the controversial grill was the thing hated by most people. I actually liked it from BMW. Okay. I thought it was a great, I mean, we talked about this, the differences and BMW is kind of moving ahead with the design. So this is more of a GT3 base grill. This is the Vorsteiner grill. Um, same with the front lip, um, also from Vorsteiner. Um, I just thought it made it more sporty, look more like the GT4 and more like the GT3 car. And it matches all the OE carbon that was in the front bumper already. Okay. And what did you make you pick the uh, Ruby Star, Ruby Stone color? So the color was a color that I've always liked from Porsche. It's from the 90s, it's from the 964, it's from the 964 cars. And I saw it at the Luftgekult show, the four. I saw the color and I was just, it was amazing. So when a nose tech made it, I thought it would be awesome for the car. Okay, let's take a quick run maybe and show me yeah. some of the other upgrades before we uh, take a look under the hood. So side view, what did you change? So it has the M Performance side skirt, the winglets also on the back. We have the M Performance side uh, M3 grill there. Um, it came with the mirror covers as part of the carbon package on the car. Okay. Um, this has the Titan 7, uh, the TD6 forged, uh, 19 in the front, 20 in the rear. Um, there's actually a special brake pad that's hidden, hidden there that we're developing at PSI. Because okay. a lot of customers complain about the massive amount of dust that these make. So the new pad is 50% less dust and 25% more performance. So we're out here testing in California with it. Uh, there's also some hidden brake lines in there too. Some stainless lines that we're running for better pedal feel because I thought it could be improved from the original car. Um, so yeah, quite a few upgrades. Yeah. All right, so let's yeah. take a look in the back as I can see a few here too. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite things on the car. Uh, is the exhaust. It's the Akrapovich exhaust. This is the octagonal tips that they came out with, which is another like super controversial thing that it they did. It looks really cool though, honestly. Yeah, but I think it matches the M3. The mm -hmm. styling is so progressive, I guess is, the, is mm -hmm. the right word. Yeah. And so is the tips. And then we have the Akrapovich rear diffuser, which matches the aggressiveness of the back, helps the tips fit and work well like gotcha. the car. We also deleted the reflectors in the back to okay. have more of like the grill style. And then on the trunk is the Vorsteiner um, deck lid spoiler, which ties in with the front the front lip and the grills. Sure. So I know we're gonna have a chance to drive the car and gonna listen to the exhaust, but tell me how the sound was improved and was there anything else you've done from your side to improve it? Yeah, so we paired the Akrapovich rear section with our PSI mid pipe to just turn the volume up a little bit. We originally put the Akrapovich on for SEMA. I loved it, but it was just too quiet for me, for my taste. So we have a mid pipe that's four stock cars. So we paired it with the Acura just to turn the volume up a little bit. So you hear the burbles, you can hear the car more. And we also have the even cherry intake on the car, which makes the noise. I mean, you heard the blow off, yeah. you heard the intake sound. So it kind of matches with the exhaust to help just have fun with the car. All right, so tell me what we're looking at here. Yeah, so we have the even cherry intake for the G80. It's got the two side boxes, replaces the plastic air boxes here, mm -hmm. really makes a look, but it also adds about 14 horsepower. So, okay. you know, our mid pipe, which is on the car, is about 12 to 14. This is 12 to 14. We also have the Daler tuner box on here, which you can't really see in the engine bay, but that, that adds about 80. So we're about 110 more horsepower than factory uh, with the car now. 
And you know, one of the things we also put on the car to help with the control and mm -hmm. have the look aesthetically that we want is this has the Moton one-way kit. Okay. Um, those are all made in Holland. Moton has a historic kind of uh, motorsport approach, but these are the one-way kit for this car. So really improves the handling and really can take it, especially how low it is. And how much you know, lower is that? Mm, I would say the car is about an inch and a half in the front, probably 1.75 in the rear. Gotcha. And from the driving experience, uh, have you felt that increase in horsepower? Yeah, I felt you can feel it. Like when we go and drive, you'll be able to feel it in the mid range. You can also hear the intake sound a lot more. And I mean, you can definitely feel the power, but the car is really, really planted with the Motons and also with the wheels and tire package are a lot wider. So. Um, you just need it. It's a whole package together that yeah. the improvement. So, you know, we built it with that in mind. So before we hop behind the wheel, let me ask you this. What was the reason why you picked the M3 non-competition with the manual versus the uh, M3 com basically? I wanted the connection to the car. Okay. You know, all the other cars I have, E36 M3, E30 M3, those are all manual and I enjoy them the most. And I really wanted to promote the manual transmission in the new car because the technology inside with the screens and the, and the technology with this motor to be paired with manual, there's nothing else like it. All right, so now yeah. it's the fun part basically. So exactly. we're gonna hum behind the wheel. Yeah. I'm gonna see how it drives and you can tell me more about some of the upgrades and ex maybe explain what I'm uh, actually feeling as far as driving. Yeah, absolutely. All right, sounds good, let's, let's do, do that. All right guys, as promised, I am behind the wheel of the PSI Ruby Stone project. Sean once again with me. So before we get going and push the car a little bit, tell me what should I be feeling coming from a stock car to this one that's been tuned up a little bit? Well, I mean, you should definitely feel the increased power. So like we talked about, it's about 110 horsepower more with our PSI mid pipe, also with the Eventuri intake, and then we have the Daler piggyback unit, which is just, I call it set it and forget unit. It just goes in, it makes the extra power, and you go on your way. There's no adjustment to it. Gotcha. Suspension wise, yeah, it's the it feels a bit stiffer. Yeah, it's the Moton one ways, um, which which really lowered the car, but it also has a really long stroke. So you get that, you get that mechanical grip. It really added a lot of grip to the car. We actually were just driving out from LA on PCH, so we have the suspension turned up a little bit for some canyon carving. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of ready to go. All right, so one thing that I've noticed immediately, the shifter, the six-speed manual, the shifts are a little bit shorter. Any changes here? Yeah, it has the, it's a brand new product, Future Classic. The guys at Future Classic came out with the short shifter. It's about 15% shorter than factory. So it's not a super notchy shifter, but it gets rid of some of the extra link throw that it had. And it was really important that that went on the car. And I think it pairs well with the Alcantara steering wheel, you know, kind of like a CSL style uh, wheel that we have in the car. Yeah, that was actually my next comment. So I actually love this steering wheel because it's not as beefier as the uh, one in the M3 and M4, the standard car. And it also feels great to the hands. Honestly, you can feel the, you know, the shape much, much better than the normal one. Yeah, I mean, the it's upgrades cool. to me, like it goes with the seats. I mean, this has the carbon seats. I would really not have this car any other way with manual and carbon seats. And then you add the Alcantara wheel and it really becomes, you know, an enjoyable experience inside. Yeah, that's one thing that I always get from uh, like comments from people that, you know, the, the steering wheels from BMW are a little bit too beefy right now. Uh, but this one kind of dials it down a little bit and it's, uh, it just feels great. Now, as far as the shifter, do you often hear complaints from your customers? They say, well, the six-speed manual in the BMW could be a little bit better. Yeah, they, they, they complain about the, the throws and they also complain about the pedal, the ease of the pedal. And I, and I had that issue with the F80 a lot. I didn't like the feel of the pedal. And honestly, I think BMW improved that in the G80. I think that there's a lot more pedal feel and the linkage of the shifting is, is great. I mean, I enjoy the car a lot. I mean, the car has over 15,000 miles. I daily drive the car in manual in Florida uh, with the roads. And it's kind of crazier in California because we got in a ton of traffic here. Yeah. Um, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way really with the car. And when it comes to the Aventuri intake, uh, do you usually, are you able to hear that inside the car too? Yeah, you can actually hear the blow off and you can hear the induction noise. Even with all the sound deadening in the new cars, you can really hear uh, that and it really adds to, you know, it adds to the car, it adds to the enjoyment. Like with the PSI midpipe and the Akrapovich that we have and then you add the Eventuri in, it just, it just makes the car better. I mean, I'm a believer that the M cars are the best cars BMW makes, but they're not perfect cars. They need to be, they need to be modded slightly. They don't have to go crazy, but um, they can always be improved. 
Okay, so before we talk about that, because I had a question on that. So basically what I noticed now from the sound that it's not as artificial that you're getting in the regular M3 and M4. So it's definitely more cabin sound that doesn't sound like it's coming from the speakers. Yeah. And I guess that's a huge improvement because often people complain about the, you know, the S58 and the exhaust system in stock BMW that it's just not loud enough, not lively at all. Yeah, it was too quiet. I mean, that's why we, you know, originally like two years ago, I made the mid pipe because to me, the stock car was too quiet. It just didn't. It wasn't exciting. So we made that to make the car sound better stock, but actually once you, you know the evolution of the modifications happened and we did the Akrapovich, I wanted to have the Akrapovich just a touch louder too. So that's why you know we built a special mid pipe for it as well. So one question for you coming from a more non-tuning world, what would be the first three or five upgrades that someone should do on a BMW, or maybe we stay specific to like the M3 and M4. If somebody comes to your shop and say, I want to, you know, improve my M3 and M4, what are the first things that they should be doing? Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we do lowering springs, because um, okay. I think the car and the G80 has this issue too, is high. It looks like a rally car. You go to a new showroom and you see the car and you're like, man. So, you know, traditionally I recommend lowering springs. We'll do spacers to kind of make the, once you drop the car, it brings the wheels out, have them match. And then we normally do kind of minor exhaust work like the mid pipe and stuff just to get some more fun into the car. Um, but also, you know, another one I'll be, I'll be recommending is the short shifter for the manual cars. You know, I don't see that many manuals though. Like yeah. Ours is normally the only one. And even, even on this drive, you know, we were with the IND M4 and that's actually a manual car too. So yeah. it was rare to see, you know, two together yeah. really. So what's the uh, most expensive project that you've had from a customer? So somebody came up to your shop and say, I want to do this. And this is the total bill that came out too. <laughs> like I think it was an M6 that we did okay. um, a few years back. We did a Jeep. We did a V. It was a V10 M6. It was an E63. Okay. We did a color change. It was a. We did Silverstone to Space Gray. <laughs> a very minor difference. The guy wanted. Yeah. So we did a co total color change. We did a, a G Power kit. I think the bill was like 150 or okay. something on, a, on an M6. Um, he did wheels. He did Brembo brakes. I mean, it was a cool project because he asked me like, if you had an M6, what would you do? Like, what would you do with like? Uh, carte blanche budget and then we were able to do that so I mean that's what's fun for me it doesn't even come down to the money that was spent it's just people wanting to do things and really letting me letting me just help that's yeah. what's that's what's special so out of all the M cars that you've had over the years which are some of your uh, which are some of them closest to your heart probably my E28 M5 is, oh, really? my, is my favorite I mean out of, out of everything it's just to me it's just bmw it's the six zone the super powered six cylinder in a sedan i mean when i look at the cars that i have they're like all sedans like e28 m5 i have an e36 m3 sedan manual which is another car that i love and then you know i have an i have a 1964 1800 ti which is the precursor to the five series mm -hmm. which i think is just an amazing another amazing car like i i, I really like the classic stuff that's my that's my favorite. So you're also getting an M4 CSL. Tell me, uh, t tell me the reasons behind that. It's the heritage. I mean, the car that I still haven't gotten for myself is is an E9 CSL, an original car. Um, that's like on my bucket list dream to get. But I want to support BMW and them making the special cars because, you know. Uh, like I said, I think that it's important that those are made and that has a heritage. And I really feel like, and I know you agree, that this CSL being the ICE engine M4 rear wheel drive will probably be the last. 100%. Yeah. The, the last one. Yeah. Just like the M5 CS, which I reviewed on the channel, and I know you, you have done that too. Yeah. And I, I just feel like it's a last hurrah, and I feel like BMW is kind of secretly saying that with, with the car. So I feel like I had to have it. That was. That was do you anticipate any mods on that car? Probably. I'll probably do some some coating with the transmission, and okay. probably we'll definitely put a suspension on it. Not go crazy uh, with it. I probably will remove the red stickers. I don't really like the red on it, but I think that's an option. But I wasn't able to get it. We're going to end up getting the frozen Brooklyn gray. Okay. Because uh, we felt like that was the launch, the launch color, the one the one to have. So I'm excited. I'm excited to get that because I'm obsessed with cool seats and carbon interior and that 
I was actually able to see the CSL at Legends yeah. um, two days ago. And no, I was, first time you just saw it, yeah. Yeah, I was impressed with it. I really like it. I mean, I have some more aggressive stuff on this car, that's for sure. Yeah. But I think that because it's a, you know, a special car, it's also like 200 pounds lighter, yeah. which is quite significant, honestly. It is. Uh, I'm sure we won't feel that on the road, you know, daily driving, but I think if we take that to the track, I think someone will be able to pull better times out of that car. And a fun fact, actually, uh, I've learned that uh, the Nürburgring record that they've done with the M4 CSL could actually be improved by quite a few seconds. Basically, the day that they did it wasn't really the perfect day as far as, you know, the weather and all of that. And they were telling me that, yeah, the car can actually be even faster. Yeah, So I it is. It. It is quite a base to be honest and you know m4 gts did seven minutes 28 this one is seven minutes 20 seconds which is super fast faster yeah. than some ferraris basically yeah i mean the, the the performance is incredible and i and i think we will take it to the track i, I want to take it to coda and do some laps and see and see the difference but you know the g82 grew on me i, I really think that the, i've always thought that the j80 looked a lot better but the yeah. more that i see the j82 especially in the csl format i think I mean, it, it's 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 awesome. As far as the drive here, I mean, honestly, your car is fantastic. I mean, it drives so fast. It is a little bit bouncy because of the suspension, but I'm assuming like on the track, this would be the perfect setup to yeah. be honest. I feel like I could have a lot of fun with this car. And uh, that 110 extra horsepower, it just really makes a difference. I mean, it just pulls hard. <laughs> it does, yeah, and it's not too much. I mean, no, it's not really. I mean, it's is, controllable, yeah. you know, sp uh, power really. And right yeah. now we're at DSC off too, so. Yeah, I mean, it's important, that, it, it's important that we add the horsepower, but not go crazy, especially with the rear wheel drive. I mean, yeah. the X drive, like I have another I have another M3 coming. It's actually the, the 50th anniversary. Oh, I cool. did the Techno Violet um, oh, nice. because of my E36. Yeah. And that's an, that's an X drive, you know, auto car. So yeah. that one will be able to tune more, make more horsepower. But I think this is kind of maxed out, I think, for the manual. And in order to have a balance, like a balanced car, you can always have more power. I also think that, you know, there's a balance uh, achieved also the wheels and tires you know these are the titan sevens okay. they're, they're they're a lot wider they're 20 in the rear 19 just like the factory car um but like there's a lot of mechanical grip with it and especially with the motons that you know you need to build a car in all the steps to enjoy what you're doing um you know as a total yeah. package basically yeah no it makes sense and uh I'm gonna say it once again, but that exhaust sounds really good, actually. Yeah. You're getting a lot more blurbs than you'll be getting in sport mode when you drive the normal, uh, you know, M3 and M4, basically. You do. Yeah, and the, and the X pipe that we developed, it really adds like a like a really lower tone mm -hmm. to the car, and it it just sounds awesome with the with the Akrapovich. And you know, Akrapovich is a technical partner of BMW Motorsport, yeah. and it's just a neat. I just love that type of stuff yeah. like on the car. It really really adds to the car. I was also trying different RPMs to kind of see if there is that drone sound, but the drone sound, it's not there. That's something that usually bothers me on exhaust systems. Yeah, I mean, also what I like about this one, you know, I'm going to say once again, compared to the M3 and M4, the standard one, uh, stock one, um, it just feels like the suspension, it gives you a lot more feedback from the road to the steering. So while the steering is a bit more numb on the regular ones, for some reason, I just feel like I'm getting a lot more feedback in this. So I don't know if it's the yeah. suspension or it the is. overall. I mean, it is the lower. suspension because it's a, it, they're high pressure dampers, so yeah. you really get that direct feedback. Mm -hmm. But also the camber settings, also like there's a lot more camber we have in the car yeah. because of the height and the adjustment that we have, and it's set up for the track. Like yeah. we had the, I had the guys at the shop set it up for that before we left. All right, Sean. So great stuff. I truly enjoy it. Uh, if there are a few takeaways, you know, from this quick drive, it's really like you said, the suspension is great. Steering feedback and I'm gonna say you know a couple of things that I love a lot definitely the shorter shifter you know it's so much easier to shift to this one even though you say it's only 15% shorter but it just makes a difference uh, but the highlight it's gotta be the steering wheel I am telling you it's such got such nice feedback yeah and it also feels great you know with the Alcantara on it I think this is a must honestly if it's not an expensive mod I definitely encourage people to do this one forward to your M4 CSL hopefully we get to drive that one in the future too yeah. I'll come down to Florida maybe we do a video on that it'll be quite cool especially with a Porsche GT4 RS that'll be pretty amazing <laughs> yeah it would be that'll be yeah. a cool one all right guys well thanks for watching just a quick review and as always please subscribe to our channel follow PSI on Instagram Facebook and all the other platforms of course YouTube as well as always thanks and I'll see you in the next one